Hello all and welcome to this and this is just going to be me doing a little preview of uh, the next big paper, well I shouldn't say the next big pay-per-view but the uh, next pay-per-view that I'm really looking forward to it is a true pay-per-view it will be on TV will be um, it's on most cable uh, providers um, and that will be uh, New Japan's Wrestle Kingdom 9 um, which is airing live on pay-per-view it's going to be um, uh, commentary by Jim Ross and Matt Stryker I know a lot of people a lot of people have been kind of eh once Matt Stryker got announced um, and he's done some videos which haven't been horrible. <coughs> They're not the best. Um, he has got all of his information right, but he's got it close enough to where, you know, it's not horrible. Um, I know some people are being very picky. I know some people are being, you know, I think overly picky about it. They want it to be, you know, 100% this. It's not 100% that. It's not like it's going to ruin the show, I don't think. It might, it, but I don't see it doing that. But, um... The show is on paper. It's on most. Everybody um, is at least showing it. Not everybody's going to show it live, which I believe is 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. Eastern. Um, and then, uh, I believe, um, U.S. time. And then, uh, if they're not showing it then, then they're showing the replay, which is going to be the basic, you know, Sunday 7 to... Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, um, or 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm sorry, um, is when they're showing the replay. Uh, the, the issue really is, is that you have some people that aren't showing the replay that are showing it live, and some people aren't showing it live that are showing the replay, is you have the Cormier-Jones uh, fight, um, which is Saturday, uh, the Saturday before, in about, you know, a whole three hours, that will probably in about three hours before this show, <coughs> goes on the air, and so they kind of got put in a bad situation because you had the pay-per-view companies decide at the last minute it looks like that they were going to bump the show some to some degree because it looks like D. Jones' uh, Cormier pay-per-view for UFC is going to be fairly large. So that's unfortunate. But um, you should be able to find it. And if you can't find it and you don't necessarily have to listen to JR, um, you can go to New Japan World, which is in J njpwworld.com you can sign up for that service if you go to the bottom of the page you can hit English and it will translate it to close enough English where you should be able to navigate sign up 999 yen a month which right now winds up like a hundred or uh, a dollar or what blah, blah, sorry eight I think it's 840 at the moment I don't know it's it's something like that it's less than nine than nine dollars um, that you that you get and um, for the next month um, you you get the Tokyo Dome, you get the Kurikan Paul show after the Tokyo Dome, which is kind of the raw after, and you get um, I think one other live event, and then you get both um, of the CML shows, which are Fantastic Manias, which are usually very fun shows. Um, so you get all of those, which that's an excellent buy. You get them live, you get to watch them, all of that stuff. So <coughs> if you're watching this video, there's no reason for you not to watch the show. Um, there's more than enough reasons, and there's more, or there's there's more than enough ways to watch it, and the show should be awesome, and you should spend your money on said show in some way or fashion, in my opinion. Now I'm going to run down the show. If you go to um, Jeff Jarrett's uh, Global Force Wrestling channel, um, you can run. You know, Matt Stryker pretty much has run down. <coughs> I think pretty much all of the major matches, there's two matches he has yet to run down, which are kind of the minor matches. Um, and then, of course, you've got the one match that won't be on the U.S. pay-per-view because it's the pre-show match. So it's not airing on the U.S. pay-per-view. It is airing on the New Japan World, which is a Royal Rumble-type uh, match with 15 competitors. They have not announced. They're not going to announce. Basically, they're going to, they're going to have their music live. And that's how you're going to know who it is, which is kind of funny because apparently they're still going to dub the music. They don't have rights for um, on New Japan World and on the pay-per-view. So, yeah, that's going to be kind of funky. Or not on the pay-per-view, but on New Japan World. So that'll be kind of funky. But um, as far as the pay-per-view itself, I do recommend everybody doing this. I mean, it's Jim Ross. Uh, Matt Stryker isn't going to screw up Jim Ross. Um, I think Matt Stryker is going to know his role. He's going to, you know, just be there to kind of add what he knows <coughs> and um, go from there. But 
Um, and this is apparently the match order that I'm going to give you. Um, you have the IWGP, you have the IWGP uh, Junior Heavyweight Title Match, which is basically your junior tag match, um, with Red Dragon, who are Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, which are also who are the champions, and also the ROH Tag Champions. Um, great tag team uh, taking on the Forever Hooligans of Alex Kozlov and Rocky Romero. Alex Kozlov is great. I don't. I to this day don't understand why the WWE passed on him. I'm guessing it was his size. It's still foolish. He's one of the most entertaining guys out there. And Rocky Romero, who is also fairly great and as a tag team, they are awesome. Uh, the Time Splitters of Alex Shelley um, and Kushida, who are very good. Um, they just had an excellent match with uh, Red Dragon at uh, ROH's uh, final battle. And um, and then the Young Bucks, who everybody pretty much knows at least of the Young Bucks. They were in TNA for a little bit and have wrestled everywhere and have had pretty much every tag team title they can possibly have, I would imagine. Um, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson. Um, this should be awesome. Um, now, this pay-per-view is four hours long. Um, that is, and there's, I believe there's ten matches, and that basically gives, if you, you count video packages and entrances and all that stuff, it gives them about 24 mat, an average of about 24 minutes a match. Of course, not everything's going to get that. Um, you know, so I expect this to probably get about 10 minutes of actual wrestling. Maybe a little longer. They may, you know, throw the guys out there and not give them kind of fancy um, entrances. Um, I could see the time splitters getting a fancy entrance. They got one last year. Um, last year, uh, the show had awesome entrances, which I think are actually much better than what WWE did at WrestleMania. Um, this is Rus this is New Japan's WrestleMania. This is their big show. This is actually the biggest show of the year in Japan, period, um, to the point that it looks like they're going to have damn near 40,000, maybe more, at this show which definitely makes it the second biggest wrestling show of the year. Um, and that is huge because that is the most New Japan has had for one of these dome shows in about a decade. So it really shows just how strong this show is. Um, but you have all of those teams. It's a four-way It's a four -way, uh, match. Um, should be fairly awesome. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Time Splitters win, but I also wouldn't be surprised if the Young Bucks or Red Dragon win either. Um, I kind of think Red Dragon's going to win, but I really don't know. This match should be a lot of fun. Like I said, I expect the wrestling in it to be about 10 minutes. Um, I expect it to probably be a much more chaotic uh, match, uh, similar to what the Young Bucks and ACH had against um, Coleman and uh, uh, Daniels and Kazarian at Final Battle, um, which was a really good match. But I expect it to be very similar to that. Um, not long enough to be great, but long enough to be very good. So there you go. Uh, then we have the next two matches, which are kind of the filler matches. But I will tell you that um, I am looking forward to one of them. I'm actually kind of looking forward to two, but I'll get into that. Uh, the first one, I think, is the weaker. I think this is the match most people who follow New Japan aren't looking very forward to. <coughs> but is the Bullet Club of Bad Luck Folly, like Jeff Jarrett, and... Um, uh, Yurgio taking on uh, Tenjo, uh, ah, Ken, Ten Koji of uh, Tenzan and Kojima, and uh, they're teaming up with Hanma to, to take on the Bullet Club. Originally, this was supposed to be um, Hanma, um, I think Captain New Japan, and, uh, and Yoshitachu. But Yoshitatsu broke his neck because he tucked his head when he took the Styles Clash, which you're not supposed to do. And people keep doing it for I don't know whatever reason. And, um, yeah, not good stuff. But uh, they, Hanma is in this match. I do think this match could be fun if Hanma were to pin Bad Luck Fale, hit the headbutt, and pin Bad Luck Fale at the dome. I think that would be awesome. Um, I think it would make this match where it would at least feel like the match was worth actually being on the show. So I can see this having some redeeming qualities to it. Um, we'll see. I don't expect this match to be very long. And, um, yeah. Then we have another tag, multi-man tag match of, uh, with uh, which was kind of weird. Um, it was basically continuing the Izuka um, yano feud, which no one really cares about, except they added stuff for people that actually care about. Um, basically... It's, uh, it was announced it would be Suzuki Gun taking on a team that Yano would have. 
And they, when they finally announced Yano's team, it was very evident that this match itself might not be very good, but it's going to lead to much bigger things. <coughs> uh, Suzuki Gun's going to be uh, Davy Boy Smith and Lance Archer, um, Killer Elite Squad, who I think are the most underrated team in New Japan, um, and maybe one of the most underrated teams in the world, to be honest. They kind of took a, a, a backseat to Gallows and Anderson um, and New Japan because Gallows and Anderson were part of the Bullet Club. I think that's unfortunate because I think they're far superior than Gallows and Anderson. They're basically stuck in limbo. They weren't used as much as they probably should have been. But uh, they're going to be in this match. They're going to be very important, I think, in this match. They'll be tagging with Shelton Benjamin and Azuka, which, of course, who cares about Azuka and, and kind of the same with Shelton Benjamin. But um, then you, they're teaming with Yano, or they're taking on Yano, who was teaming with Morifuji, which is awesome, but also taking on their, uh, the NOAA team of uh, Mikey Nichols and Shane Haste, uh, TMDK. And the thought is this is going to lead to a uh, Killer Elite Squad versus uh, TMDK feud, which should be fairly awesome. Um, I also think that there's going to, this probably will be kind of a chaotic match. I expect it to actually probably be fairly good. Um, and like I said, it's probably going to lead, there'll probably be some cool moments in it, which will lead to some far, to things. So I am excited about this match. Um, the whole reason why this is in here is apparently, uh, New Japan is now giving money to, to Noah. It looks like what they're basically going to fund Noah so that they can send guys like, um, Tenzan and Kojima and Nagata, uh, Tiger Mask and other guys that they just don't have room for on their roster because the roster is a little bloated. Um, to Noah <clears throat> to give them something to do and then bring them back. Um, so that should be fairly cool. Hopefully we get some other people from Noah coming in too. Um, and hopefully come G1 time, more Fuji is in the G1, which will just add that much to the G1, um, which is awesome. Like I said, really this, I think this is to lead up to uh, uh, Nichols and Hayes taking on uh, Smith and Archer, which should be awesome. Um, like I said, I, I think Smith and Archer are way underrated. Um, last year's G1, I, you know, I'm a big fan of Dave Boy Smith Jr. I, I, I had faith when he was going to be in last year's G1 that he would do well, and he did. Lance Archer, though, I thought did amazingly well, and then I think they both did amazingly well <coughs> um, this year in the G1 as well and really showed that they belonged and I think, um, you know, I think opened up a lot of people's eyes, so... There was that. Then we're getting kind of a weird match, um, a UWFI rules match, which basically means um, can only end in a submission or count or a knockout, no pinfalls. Versus Sakuraba versus Suzuki. Um, I am looking extremely forward to this match. Um, when Sakuraba is in there with the right guy, um, he puts on awesome stuff. I think him and Suzuki rolling around and doing kind of this UWFI kind of match. Um, has the possibility of being really entertaining because it'll be very different from anything else on the show, um, and could and probably be booked very well. I expect this to kind of maybe be the first show with a little bit of, or first match with a little bit of pageantry to it. So we will see. Um, but I am looking forward to that. Uh, then we're getting the Never Hope and Wait title match of Ishii taking on Makabe. This should be just two guys going in there and beating the tar out of each other for however long this match goes on. And it should be very good. Um, this match has the possibility to, I think, I think the junior tag match has a possibility of being great. I think this match has the possibility of being great. Um, I think pretty much, um, and I think the next match, which is the uh, junior heavyweight title match, could be great, depending on how good Kenny Omega is. I'm, um, basically, it's Taguchi taking on Kenny Omega. I fully expect Kenny Omega to win this match. Um, and win the title and take the title back to the Bullet Club. <coughs> but it um, should be really good, and I'm looking very forward to it. And um, I don't know how great it will be. I'm not the biggest Taguchi fan. Um, Kenny Omega could make it great, though, because he is that good. Then you have the IWGP tag title match. This is another – this match I'm looking forward to because hopefully – Goto and Shibata win. Other than that, I really don't care about the match. I'm not big on Doc Gallows and Ken Anderson, though I like both of them. Um, I just don't think they worked um, very well as you know the the top of the tag team division. Um, like I said, I think Kess. If, if you're going to use a foreign team, I think Kess is a better um, 
better choice, but because they're not the Bullet Club, they're not put in that position, and, and Gallows and Anderson are. So I completely understand it. Hopefully, Goto and Shibata win this. I will give Goto and Shibata something to do. And I've said this before, I think once Goto and Shibata win, I think what you have is you can bring in some outsiders, and really this should be the New Japan versus Outsiders title, um, other than the Bullet Club. So there we go. And I expect that match to be at least good, I would think. Then we have AJ Styles versus Naito. This match should be great. Um, or could be great, I could say. This, depending on how much time they get, um, just really good. I think Dino has something to prove. I think AJ Styles has something to prove. This will probably be this is the biggest match probably AJ Styles has ever had, um, as far as um, attendance goes. So this should be he should he should be wanting to put on a show stealer. I think Naito also want, would probably want to put on a show stealer. So there you go. There, um, this all that's and this has been led up for a while. And you have Nakamura versus Kota Ibushi. Um, last year, they had an awesome match at the G1. Um, and then this year, Ibushi uh, got a concussion right before the G1, was able to be in the G1, um, which led to the Hanma being in G1, which turned out to be awesome. So there was that. Um, but Nakamura versus Ibushi, could it steal the show? It could. Do I expect it to? Not really. I expect it to be great because it's Nakamura, and Nakamura is going to want to go out there and put on the best show he can. Um, I expect some pageantry with, with Nakamura, so there we go there. So, okay. And then your main event, which is Tanahashi versus Okada. They, you know, uh, two Tokyo Domes ago they fought. Um, not the first time they fought. Won't probably be the last time they fought. Um, and uh, Tanahashi coming in as the champion. Um, they they've set this up where Okada just pile drived uh, Tanahashi on uh, the concrete a couple weeks ago. So his neck is like not so well. And um, yeah, and so here you go. And these two guys can go. These guys definitely can have a, an amazing, 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 amazing match. This is probably the best feud in pro wrestling right now. Um, and just, just awesome stuff. And tops off what I think was going to be an awesome show. I, I think this show is going to be, I think they're going to pull out all the stops. <coughs> I think their thought is going to be, um, you know, even if people don't buy it live, they're going to want to watch the replay and people are going to want to hear about it. Um, I definitely recommend everybody checking this show out because I do think it's going to be awesome. Keep in mind the last probably three years, um, almost four years really, uh, this show, the Tokyo Dome show, um, even though it's probably the first big show of the year, always winds up, you know, leading, you know, either being or being very close to, you know, match of the or um, show of the year. So it really does set the standard. It's that good of a show. You're talking about probably right now, wrestling-wise, the hottest promotion in the world, I think. Um, and they're they're doing great business while they're, while they're at it. I mean, they're not doing WWE business, um, but nobody's doing WWE business. But they are probably right now the closest of doing it, with AAA probably being AAA or CML being the next closest, and then um, Dragon Gate after them. And Dragon Gate does not. And I. I I'm hoping at some point to be able to do a review of Final Gate, um, which is the last Dragon Gate pay-per-view. It was just this past weekend, and I haven't seen the show yet. I've heard it was great. Um, I look forward to watching it. Um, I, you know, I don't get, to, I don't watch as much Dragon Gate as I probably should, but sometimes I think I wa if you watch too much Dragon Gate, it starts to kind of lose something. Um, but I do think Dragon Gate is probably the most um, Kind of the sleeper promotion. It is probably the, the the best promotion people don't talk about, which says something because people do talk about it, but it's that good. I mean, they are definitely the number two promotion in Japan. Um, they're every bit the ring work is every bit as good as anything that you'll see in in New Japan. So there you go. But anyways, um, that's the show. Um, like I said, I, I would recommend everybody checking it out. Um, the tag, the junior tag title match should be very good. All of these teams have have I think. In the last probably two years, every single one of the teams have had the title. So, you know, you've got that. Um, you've got the Bullet Club match, which, you know, will be a Bullet Club match. Um, and uh, with Jeff Jarrett in it. So, eh, we don't know about that. <coughs> the Noah tag, the um, the Yano versus Zuka tag. 
as long as Yano and Azuki aren't in it very long, um, I ex you know, like I said, I expect this to be the start of bigger things. So there's that. Um, like I said, I'm looking very forward to uh, Sakuraba versus Suzuki. I think, that, you know, whenever they've been in tags together and they've kind of gone off and done their own thing, um, it's usually good. So I expect them to have a match to be really good. And Sakuraba, when he you know, course wrestled um, Nagata, was really good. And of course, Nagata, you know, is absent on the show. I expect him to be in the Rumble that will be on the pre show on uh, New Japan World. So. There you go. There, um, like I said, Ishi versus uh, Makabe should be amazing. Well, I don't know about amazing. It will probably be the stiffest match on this card. Um, it'll be two dudes just beating the living fuck out of each other, to be honest, and will be awesome for it. Um, the junior tag title match should be really good um, and lead to better things as well. As Kenny Omega is as the champion will be fairly amazing, I think. Um, I, same thing with the IWTV title. I, I expect that match to be good. And again, being excited because you know Goto and Shibata as champions excites me. I, I, I see a lot of good things. And then um, AJ Styles versus Night. You know that could be the show match of the sh the night. Uh, Nakamura and Abushi could be the show of the night. Um, Tanahashi and Okada could be the show of the night. And really, the junior tag title match could be the show of the the match of the night if they give it enough time. And there's a chance that even, you know, Ishii and Makabe could be the match of the night um, if, you know, if, if, if they're clicking. So, like I said, this show should be fairly awesome. I'm looking very forward to it. Um, check your local pay-per-view providers. If, you, if it's not, they're not showing it, um, definitely check out New Japan World. It's definitely worth the money. <coughs> so, there you go. And with that, I'm kind of out of here. So, have a good one. And I'll